My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the ATI T Study Manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll figure out how to arrive at the area of a parallelogram, which is your, which is the fourth entry. We are on page number 93. Turn to page 93. Today is our lesson number 153. We are on page number 93, where we see basic geometric formulas. Basic rudimentary geometric formulas, and this is the fourth entry in the table here. If you look at the table, the fourth entry is parallelogram. How does one go about? figuring out the area of a parallelogram. Well, before we worry about that part, let's first talk about what a parallelogram is. What is a parallelogram? Did you know that a square is a parallelogram? What is a parallelogram? The definition of parallelogram is very simple. A parallelogram is where opposite sides are parallel. This side right here, A to B, A, B, C, and D, it's a square. I'm telling you it's a square because all of these four sides are equal. But what's a parallelogram? A parallelogram is when opposite sides are equal. So line AB is parallel to CD and line AD is parallel to BC. That's the only requirement of a parallelogram. All squares are parallelogram. All squares are parallelogram, but all, all parallelograms are not squares because squares in addition to fulfilling this condition that the opposite sides are parallel, it has a couple of other conditions. Square is a very limited, very constricted guy. It doesn't have too much, too many freedom. Not only the sides have to be parallel, opposite sides have to be parallel, just like in a parallelogram. The second condition the square has to have is that all four sides have to be equal. All four sides have to be equal. That is not the case in parallelogram. We'll see it in a second. The third condition is that all of these angles that we see here, even though we don't put them there, but these are all 90 degrees. If all of the angles are 90 degrees, if all of the angles are 90 degrees, and all four sides are equal to each other, then voila, all of a sudden, your parallelogram turns into a square. Because otherwise, a parallelogram looks like this. See here, I'm telling you that this side is equal to that side, and I'm telling you this side is equal to that side, and I'm also telling you that line AB is parallel to CD. Line AB is parallel to CD. I'm also telling you that AD is parallel to BC. But as you clearly see, these are not 90 degrees. These angles are not 90 degrees. And all four sides are not equal. But because in this particular, in this particular parallelogram, we have two unique qualities, which is first, that the all angles are 90 degrees, and second, that second, the fact that all four sides are equal, because of such a special case, we, we, we give it a special name. Instead of calling it parallelogram, we call it a square. Did you also know that all rectangles are parallelogram? All rectangles are parallelogram. Because what's a rectangle? A rectangle is where opposite sides are parallel. Side AB, side AB is going to be parallel to side CD. And side AD is going to be parallel to BC. It fulfills this condition. As long as it fulfills this condition, it's a parallelogram. But in addition to that, it has one more property, which is all the angles are equal. All the angles are 90 degrees. All the angles are 90 degrees. And if that happens, we call it a rectangle. We don't call it a square, because a square has one more property, which is all four sides are equal. Here, all four sides are not equal, only the opposite sides are equal. AB is equal to BCD, as you can clearly see, that's what this means. This line, that line, that means those, those two are equal. Let me change, change the color to red one. And by putting a two marks here, and a two marks there, we indicate that AD is equal to B. So all four sides are not equal, only the opposite sides are equal to each other. But opposite sides, as long as they're parallel, is called a parallelogram. This is the parallelogram in the most generic sense. 
All rectangles are parallelogram, but all parallelograms are not rectangle. All squares are parallelogram, but all parallelograms are not squares. The question is, how do we find out area of something like this? We know how to find the area of a square. We know how to find the area of a rectangle. How do we go about here? Let's find out, shall we? Let's redraw it. Let's draw it. Let's redraw it a little bit better. In order to find out the area of a parallelogram, A, B, C, D, how do I know it's a parallelogram? It will be given to you. They will simply tell you that A, B, C, D is a parallelogram, or they will tell you that A, B is parallel to C, D, and B, C, B, C is parallel to A, D. And these sides are equal, but we don't have to worry about it. These, these sides are equal, but we don't have to worry about it. What they will tell you, in order for us to figure out, in order for us to figure out the area of a parallelogram, we have to know how high it is. What's the height of this parallelogram? What is what does the word height mean? Height means how high is it? How high is it from where? From the base. This is the base. This is the base. If I were to continue this thing, if you were to continue this thing, how high is this guy right here? That's the height. We must know that. They must give you the height and they must give you the base. They will give it to us. Let's call, let's call, let's say the base is B centimeters high and height is C centimeters. Rather, 8 centimeters. Now we can figure out the area of this guy. But how? Well, it's very simple. Very simple. Chop it up into two triangles. Let's figure out the area of this triangle first. But how do we figure out the area of a triangle? The area of a triangle is one half base, which is B, times height, which is H. Isn't it? That's, that's, the, that's the area of this triangle. This is triangle A, B, D. What about the other half? Well, because it's called other half, it is the other half. It's the mirror image of it. The area the area of the other triangle, B, C, D, D, C, D, is the same as the area of A, B, D. Because it's a symmetric figure, we just chopped it into half. The area of this guy is also going to be one half base times height. One half base times height, area of this triangle right now we're talking about. We're talking about now the area of this triangle. So there you go. Half plus half is one. Therefore, the area of the entire thing, area of the parallelogram A, B, C, D, area of area of the entire parallelogram A, B, C, D would have to be half plus half is one. So it's just one times base times height. It's simply base times height. It's very similar to length times width. But in the context of a parallelogram, one does not speak in terms of length and width, one speaks in terms of base and height. Because when we say height, height does not mean this side. Height, I wish I had one more color, I do have one more color. Height does not mean this side. This is this side. C to D is not the height. That is not the height. Don't get confused. People sometimes do. That is not the height. This is the height. Height is the straight distance perpendicular from the base to the highest point. We have to know how high it is. Once we know what, how high it is, it's simply base times the height. That's it. But why base times the height? Because we break it up into two triangles. Each one of them is half base times height. Half base times height. Therefore, the whole thing is just base times height. But they have to give you the figure. For example, for example, if they tell us that the height is 7 centimeters, and if they tell us that the base happens to be 12 centimeters, now we can figure out the area of this guy. The area of this guy, area of this parallel term A, B, C, D, is going to be base times height. The base is 12 centimeter, height is 7 centimeter. 12 times 7. Well, how much is 12 times 7? Oh, don't look at me. How the hell do I know? Let's find out, shall we? 12 times 7, well, 10 times 7 is 70, and 2 times 7 is 14. 14 and centimeter times centimeter is centimeter squared. Let me erase all these things so we can have the room. 
How do we figure out 12 times 7? It's very simple. 12 times 7 or 7 times 12 if you like. Now you understand this 12 is made up of 10 and a 2. That's why it's called 10's digit. We have 1 10 and 2 1's. So instead of doing 12 times 7, we break it up. We do 7 times 10, which is 70, and 7 times 2, which is 14. Is it? 10, 10 times 7? 10 times 7, which gives us 70, and then 2 times 7, which gives us 14, which is what we did here. 84 the square centimeter. That's the area of this parallelogram. Which is what you have there, the fourth entry in the table. Well, the, the next three, the next three that you see in the chart there, one of them is very sim simple, which is a circle. We already talked about how to figure out the area of a circle when we started this process on day number 146 is when we began the geometry portion, geom geometry portion of this exam. We already talked about how to figure out the area of a circle. We all know it. It's pi r squared. So that's the easy part. But there are two more left in that table. One is trapezoid and the other one is rhombus. And those are nasty. We're going to do them in the next video. Do you understand? Bye now.